And now, on to our dinosaur of the day, Avasaurus, which was a request from Dodo via our Patreon and Discord, so thanks. It was an anti-ornithine bird that lived in the late Cretaceous in what is now Montana in the U.S., in the Hell Creek Formation. And it looked like a bird that you might see today, except it had teeth. It was covered in feathers, it had sharp claws on its feet, had a short tail, had a beak. It's estimated to be up to 28 inches, or 72 centimeters long, and weigh 11 pounds, or roughly 5 kilograms. The type and only species is Avasaurus archibaldi, and the genus name Avasaurus means bird lizard. The species name is in honor of J. David Archibald, who found the fossil. And these fossils were found in 1975. The holotype's just one lower leg bone, the tarsometatarsus. And the holotype, as a reminder, is the individual that a species name is based on. It has one of the largest tarsometatarsi known for enantiornithines. It's about, well, it's almost three inches or almost 74 millimeters long. Oh, it's huge. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There's another fossil found. An incomplete coracoid that's part of the shoulder, and that's larger than the holotype. So, Avasaurus had inwardly curved claws, and it was probably a predator. There was a second species that Verricchio and Chiappi named in 1995 called Avasaurus gloriae, found in the Two Medicine Formation, but in 2018, Adderholt and others renamed it as its own genus, Gediaia. So, again, there's just the one species now of Avasaurus. Avasaurus archibaldi. At first, Avasaurus was thought to be a non-avian theropod when Brett Sermon and Paul described it in 1985, and then later Chappie in 1992 re-described it as an enantiornithine. An uh, enantiornithines, they're extinct avians or birds. There are a lot of them and a lot of different types that lived in the Mesozoic. They went extinct at the end of the Cretaceous, but they first appeared about 131 million years ago, and they've been found on all continents except Antarctica. Many of them have been found in the Jehol group in China. It's about half of the species have been found there. We've talked about a number of them. Yeah, they're so common there. I didn't realize that they were found all over the world because <laughs> we're always just talking about the ones in Northeast China. Yeah. Yeah, so not as many found in North America. And then all the ones found in North America are from the late Cretaceous. The first, probably, in Antiornithines fossils found in North America were three foot fragments that were found in Wyoming in the Lance Formation, and they included an incomplete metatarsal three that may be from an Avasaurus archibaldi. Over 80 species of Antiornithines have been named, but probably not all of them are valid. Some were named just from one bone. Almost all Antiornithines had teeth and clawed fingers on their wings, but otherwise they looked a lot like modern birds. And most of them were small, like sparrow-sized, but there's a lot of variability. It's a very diverse group. They include waders, swimmers, insectivores, fishers, and raptors. The first enantiornithine found was thought to be a modern bird, Gobiterix. At first, it was thought to be a paleonath related to ostriches. Hmm. So they resemble a lot of things, because like you said, they, some of them even look like raptors or birds of prey, mm -hmm. even though they wouldn't technically be raptors. Yes. But and antiornithines were first considered to be its own lineage in 1981 by Cyril Walker. And the name in antiornithines means opposite birds. They're named because their shoulder bones have this socket joint between them that is the reverse or opposite of modern birds. Avasaurus is part of the family Avasauridae, and that includes animals from South America, such as Soroavasaurus and Nucanornis. Michael Brett Sermon and Gregory Paul named Avasauridae in 1985, but at the time they thought that they were small non-avian dinosaurs, although they did think that Avasaurus could be an, an antiornithine. They wrote, quote, In 1975, an expedition from the University of California, Berkeley, collecting in the Hell Creek Formation in Montana, recovered fragments of fossil bird bones associated with dinosaurian and other reptilian remains. This collection included a complete metatarsus that was called dinosaurian by neo-ornithologists, but avian by most dinosaur paleontologists, exclamation <laughs> mark. Uh, that's really funny. So if you're a bird expert, you look at it and you think it's a bird. If you're a dinosaur expert, you look at it, you think it's a dinosaur. No, I think the opposite. You're a bird expert, you thought it was dinosaur. You're a dinosaur expert, you thought it was bird. Oh, gotcha. <laughs> so it looks too weird to be in your group. Yeah. It's an opposite bird. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> now, at that point, a series of studies had found that birds were descendants of theropod dinosaurs, and as a result, scientists did know that there were a lot of similarities between the two clades. They did mention that this made it difficult in assigning isolated leg or foot bones to the proper group, which is what Avisaurus was. Chappy later assigned them to Aves and and ornithines in 1992 based on some of their features being similar to Archaeopteryx and some Cretaceous birds. Avisauridae now is a family of ornithines that lived in the Cretaceous, and they're known for features in their leg and foot bones, including parts being not completely fused. They're the largest and last of the ornithines, but not many fossils have been found, and we mostly know them from their leg bones, but they probably could perch in trees and they may have been arboreal. The bird lizard that's an opposite bird. Mm-hmm. That's Avisaurus. Yes. <laughs> For those of you who listen to our Dinosaur of the Day segment and you like it, please consider becoming a patron. We take new Dinosaur of the Day requests from our patrons and offer a bunch of other perks as well. So check out our page at patreon.com slash I know dino or click the link on the left. <laughs> 